Hello everyone. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good Wednesday already, a hump day, middle of the week. Well, we're uh, switching gears a little bit as we're going to be moving to, and we've, we've talked about uh, Jesus and surrender, surrender and me, and then Jesus and generosity. And now we're moving on to generosity and me and seeing what we can find in, in uh, the Lenten story about uh, how we can be more generous. Uh, this is part of the uh, Infinitum uh, Lenten journey uh, from the Version Bible app, Bible.com, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff in here, and, and uh, we're going to go a little deeper. We're, we're switching up passages today. Uh, the, the passage for today is John 13, 21 to 32, and we'll be the, in this for a few days. And uh, let me read it for you. Uh, we're, we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit, or back ahead a little bit, and this is uh, back to the upper room. Uh, with Jesus and the disciples. It says, After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one in the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. In other words, things are underway. Jesus is getting ready to head to the cross and to uh, sort of the, the uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's headed in that, that direction now. Well, let's go back to uh, the Bible study. Uh, this is what it says. So you remember the three Lenten features, the three main parts of Lent, four, or the three main sort of reasons for, for Lent. First is fasting. Uh, you know, you give up something and, and uh, you know, for the Lord. Uh, second is, is penitence, being sorry for your, your sins. Uh, it's related to repentance. And it's, it's uh, sort of that, that act of being sorry. Uh, and it's, it's a preparation for Easter. And then preparation for baptism is the third Third part of Lent, uh, these three things are, are sort of generally held by the church as being uh, what we are doing, what, how we sort of process uh, preparation for, for Easter, press, prepar- and, and really his death and resurrection both. Fasting, penitence, and preparation for baptism. And they say that that uh, roughly corresponds with the, uh, the things that uh, uh, the, the Infinitum group, this group that's an offshoot of the Salvation Army, focus on surrender generosity and mission and so we've talked about surrender we we're talking about we've started talking about generosity now we're going to talk about ourselves and generosity and then finally mission and so that we are matching them in our our reading plans through the infinitum linton collection and now generosity and me so in the last plan we defined a generous person as as showing a readiness to give more or something as or, or give more of something as money or time than is strictly necessary or, or expected, showing kindness towards others. Uh, this is larger or more plentiful than is usual or necessary. Uh, magnanimous is that word we talked about yesterday and, and a few times last week. Uh, you know, going above and beyond. That's the idea. That's what Jesus did, did for us. Uh, it says here, our readings in this plan may appear awkward through the lens of penitence and generosity, because uh, we're kind of skipping back and forth, uh, you know, we've kind of done a little bit of that, and it's a little bit awkward, but uh, there's there's a reason why they do that, and, and we'll get to some of that. But this is there are spiritual insights for us to gain and apply when it comes to these things. Uh, you know, we're talking about generosity, and, and they list here. This is here's John thirteen twenty eight from the the Voice uh, Bible. It says it says no one understood Jesus's instructions to Judas because Judas carried the money. Some thought he was being instructed to buy the necessary items for the feast or give some money to the poor. Uh, so, so they're focusing in on that today as far as uh, uh, learning to be generous. This is corporately, 
the larger traveling Jesus caravan. So, so it's Jesus and the disciples and, and those others that, that hung out with them. Uh, you know, they're, they're sort of moving around the, the, the Israeli uh, countryside. And it says, Corporally, the larger traveling Jesus caravan seems to have had no consistent source of income. Granted, there were some women, this is from Luke 8, 3, again from The Voice, women who played an important role in Jesus' ministry using their wealth to provide for him and his other companions. So there's a group of people that were giving, uh, and, and they're specifically pointing out the, the women. It says, yeah, we can infer from these verses that giving money to the poor was not uncommon. In other words, they're essentially a poor group. Uh, they're moving around the countryside. They're doing different things. They're paying for their needs for food and maybe for some lodging, different things like that. But, but uh, it's all because of others' generosity. But here's the thing. The thing we're seeing in this, this verse, that, it became, that, they, that those in the caravan were then giving to the poor, and that was not uncommon. That was something that was sort of expected because we, we know, it says Judas carried the money. Some thought he was being instructed to, to buy the necessary items for the feast or to give some money to the poor, which means they, they, weren't, weren't, you know, they, they had seen Jesus do that before. At other points, Jesus had had told Judas to go and and help the poor. So so maybe they thought that's what he's doing here, as Jesus le- as Judas leaves the uh, the party that they're <laughs> sort of so to speak not not really party, but uh, uh, but anyways he leaves to go, and uh, uh, they think maybe he's going to to help help the poor. Which like I said, that tells us that that even though they didn't have a lot, what they had they they often gave to those that have have need. And so it says, yet you can, we can infer from these verses that giving money to the poor was not uncommon. It was something of a habit or practice of the caravan. Uh, I never heard it really called a caravan before, the group of people that moved with Jesus. But that's what they were. Collectively, they exercised generosity. It says it becomes an obvious standard and possible challenge to us in our collective lives. For us, it may be our family, our cell group, our local missional community, or church. Uh, But the example of the Jesus caravan is one of default generosity. That is, when they saw the comrade who who carried the money heading out, they naturally assumed he was shopping for the feast or giving some money to the poor. Uh, Isn't that interesting? I I never noticed that little little tidbit that's in this passage. Uh, But that's a good one for us, isn't it? That even though they didn't have much, what they had, they they gave. And, And uh, you know, I, I think that's a, a, a powerful statement. And wasn't it Peter and John who, who later who, who encountered the man and said, you know, we don't have silver gold, we do not have, but what we have, we give you. Uh, you know, that's a that's a uh, it was a, just a natural part of who they are, and, and I like that. That's something we can learn from. The generosity is is uh, just a part of of who we are. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is, it becomes an obvious standard and possible challenge to us in our collective lives. For us, it may be our family or cell group. I, I already read that, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> when they saw a need, they, they just assumed that that's what they were doing. Of course, such a lifestyle doesn't preclude major campaigns to raise funds to help build wells for clean water or provide basic necessities for starving people in other parts of the world. In other words, our mission's giving. It doesn't stop us from that. As their medical essentials for those vulnerable to sickness and death. Those are all great too. It's just that corporate generosity was part of the DNA of the Jesus caravan. Uh, they just, uh, yes, they gave, you know, we, we, we give to missions, but we also give locally. We live, give to people that are in need, that are, are around us. And, and I think that's a good lesson. And it has to do with our having a heart of generosity uh, in us that we need to have for those around us. And it asks the question here, is it part of your collective uh, DNA yet? Is, is it part of our DNA to be people who are giving? People, even though we may have very little, we still give what we can to those that, uh, that are in need. Well, let's uh, wrap up today with a, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, teach us these things. Teach us to be uh, people that are giving, people that are hold lightly, hold loosely to the things of this earth and give all that we can, and and to do it even collectively as a church. I, I'm so thankful for how giving our church is in, in setting up uh, Kay's Blessing Box and our, our lunch drive throughs and, and different things that we do locally here and support uh, for various organizations here in our, our community, and, and whether 
it, it be the pregnancy center or whether it be the, the uh, homeless shelter or whatever, Lord, help us to continue to do that and find more ways to support those in need around us and uh, not, you know, that maybe it, it just might be assumed that we're helping someone when someone leaves. I don't, I don't know. Uh, thank you for this example. Lord, help us uh, to be like that. Lord, thank you again for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, gather together online. And uh, Lord, we just just uh, lift up those that are in need today. Lord, uh, you know uh, those that are struggling, those that are in need of a, of a touch, of your healing touch. Uh, Lord, I, I think of Kim Little who's in the hospital. Lord, we just pray that you'd be very near to him. Lord, bring healing to his body. Uh, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. We just... Uh, we love you today. We thank you for your presence with us. And Lord, continue to teach us, continue to help us in this Lenten uh, process of, of, of uh, preparing our hearts and minds for uh, the celebration of, of, uh, of uh, Good Friday and Easter. Lord, just help us. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, thanks for, for watching. Uh, Lord bless you. Have a great rest of your day and we'll uh, be back tomorrow with another devotional. We'll uh, see you later. Bye bye.